Hi again folks, how you all doing? So a chap called Gary got in touch with me and uh, asked if I'd look at this Hornby A4 Golden Plover. Um, he said it was running a bit lumpy and he took the locomotive apart to check the pickups and things and uh, then struggled to get it back together. I know that feeling. Uh, and now it doesn't run at all. So let's turn on the power and see what happens. Yeah, nothing at all. But the amateur hits the panic button, so it looks like it's shorting. Let's shove her into the shed and we'll see what's what. Alright, let's go look at what's going on with this. Hornby tender driven A4. So this is Golden Plover and it's got a headboard on it saying the Queen of Scots. Uh, so yeah, there's uh, <laughs> certainly something going on here. Um, the wheels are hitting the side of the uh, the body, yeah, the body's not been fitted on right, and I think there's other issues going on there. Yeah, I can see it's uh, not been assembled correctly at all. Um, these things, you take them apart, and they can be an absolute nightmare to get back together. So I have every sympathy for, for Gary. Um, I never make fun of anyone having a go at trying to fi fix their, uh, their local. Um, I'm all for people giving it a go. If you get stuck... You ask for help. Um, but yeah, give it a go. You never know. But let's see if we can get this apart and get it back together properly. Take it from there. Undo that. At least there's no speedometer or anything silly. Yeah, the wires need a bit securing. Pickups are not touching the wheels on this side at all. I just don't think they're sitting correctly. We'll remove uh where's my tweezers? There they are. Uh, right, we need to remove this rear pony truck. And then we'll undo these screws. And lifts out. So the condition of the pickups is okay. They just need to be bent a little bit to make good contact. Now, what have we got going on here? Right, so I think the issue has been the bearings have all popped out of position. And, you know, that can be quite a delicate process, trying to get all the bearings in position into the chassis and then getting this fitted on. These bearings will just pop out every time you try to get the thing back together. It's complicated by the fact that the bearings on this rear wheel sit in a plastic receptacle that's spring-loaded. Right, I think what we'll do is I'm going to give this whole wee squish out. Give it a, a degrease. Make sure these pickups are all going to make contact with the wheels. I'm going to take this front bogey off as well because I want to give the wheels a good clean. The bearings in this front axle are just refusing to sit where they need to be. Get one in, then the other one pops out. There we go. And then of course the other ones pop out. It's like trying to put eels in a jar. Just when you think you've got them all set, one comes out. Okay, we'll get some oil in there. This doesn't pick up through the axles, so we can be a bit more generous with the oil. And then, we'll see if we can get this on without disturbing the, uh, the bearings. Right, there's that looking a bit better. I'm not out of the woods yet though. Ah, uh, no. Uh, 
and it's not there either. And that's a bit iffy. No, it's not going to work. Let me take it off again. So this has two wiper pickups per wheel, um, which I don't like. It's far too much uh, resistance on the wheels. You know, these wiper pickups affect the movement of the wheel to a degree. And if you've got two pickups per wheel in constant contact, um, they kind of act like brakes. So the locomotive doesn't move as freely as it would if you just had a single pickup per wheel and with you know sort of an older type model where you've got a single pickup per wheel uh, on one side and then it picks up through the the wheels into the chassis from the other side so you've got the minimum number of pickups but this has two pickups per wheel Aye. Uh, right okay let's get these bearings back into position Oh, it's going to go up there like that. That's better. And that one's going to go up through there. That's a bit more like it. No, nope, these ones aren't touching. No, nope. try it again. It's not surprising people have trouble getting these back together. They are just stupid. Right, we need to make sure the bearings are in place, pickups are touching the wheels, and these wires route correctly. That one's fine. That's it. Right, fingers crossed. That's it this time. Think so. Right. There we go. All right, okay. Right, so we need to secure these wires a bit. Right, we'll secure these wires. I'm going to use a bit of duct tape for this. Um, electrical insulating tape never sticks very well. I think uh, duct tape will do the job a bit better. It's a bit stickier. There we go. Looks better. Okay. We'll give these front wheels a clean because they're a bit dirty. People all seem to forget to clean their front bogies. There we go, I think we're done. Um, it all looks reasonably well lubricated. Nothing's hitting anything. So I think we're good to go. Um, we will have a, a wee look inside the tender though to get a look at the motor. Um, I just wouldn't want to hand this back just in case there's something nasty inside here like a foreign object or whatever. Um, but we'll maybe have a look at the commutator just to see what state it's in. We might be doing a little ring field service here. Uh, it's actually not bad. It's not bad at all. That all looks pretty good. Again, can maybe do with a, a bit of a wheel clean. So we'll do that, but that all looks okay. There's uh, 
lubrication in there. I think what I'll do is get a wee bit of oil behind the pinion gear though. Oil in there. And there's grease in here, but I'm just going to put a wee spot of oil in there as well. But I can see the commutator, it's not that dirty. Everything looks in good condition. It's lubricated. So for once, I'm not going to take the, the motor apart. Just going to leave it. Check the traction tyres. Again, they're dirty, but they're not moving. So we'll give it all a, a good clean up. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, keep traction tyres clean. They're very good at attracting dirt. And when they're dirty, they don't work particularly well. Okay, pop this back on. We'll get on to the front. And it should. Should. Quit down. I don't know if it's my screwdriver has become demagnetised or these screws are not magnetic, but they won't stick to the screwdriver. So a little bit of black tack. We'll do the job. There we are. We're done. Right. Let's come pull this out shed and see how it goes around the layout. Okay then, let's bring out Golden Plover.
So there we are, that's Golden Plover back in running order. Um, yeah, the faff and fiddle of the Hornby models from this era of manufacture, you know, it's, it's just daft design, making it really challenging to take the model apart and, and reassemble it. Just a load of fiddly piddly nonsense. Um, I suspect the running issue this may have had when Gary took it apart was down to bad pickup contact, uh, uh, dirty wheels and maybe dirt on the drawbar contacts. Um, I sorted out the pickups to ensure they were all making contact with the wheels, cleaned everything up, uh, including the inside of the locomotive wheels, which I don't think I actually filmed. But, um, you know, ensuring everything makes good contact that should be making good contact and giving everything a really good clean um, is always your first step to take when a locomotive runs a bit lumpy or stoppy starty. Uh, if the problem persists, then investigate the drive train and the gears. But intermittent pickup is, you know, the most likely cause. Uh, this ring field is a bit of a whiner and actually sounds a bit like a five pole. Um, funny, sometimes they run almost silently and other times they growl a bit or they whine. It's, you know, it'll just be the wear and tear in the gears, I suppose. But uh, I was tempted to take the motor apart and do all the usual business to it. But uh, I, I suspect the whine would probably have persisted, uh, maybe even got worse. Uh, the motor's an otherwise good neck and my remit was to get the locomotive back together and get the thing running, so job done. Uh, I kind of wish this pulled away a bit smoother, um, but it's just a, an annoying trait of some ring-field uh, tender-driven locomotives, I'm afraid. Some of them just don't. Sometimes with a good bit of running, it can improve, but um, yeah, I'd like to see it pull away better, but otherwise runs okay. Uh, a few people have been asking about the next layout update. Uh, hopefully I'll get to that soon. I've had a spate of repairs to do, um, amongst other things. Um, but yes, a latest update will be coming very soon. Okay, I shall get this packed up and back to Gary. Catch us later, folks.